to read this first and then explanation. So, <clears throat> So today is the school is school Mia Ika Mia Ika Hindi philosophy school. So, so this this is school Mia Ika Hindi school. Okay. So first I will read then then explanation comes later. The Nia Yika exit permanent partless material phenomena within the being of an individual and the self. This self is trained to be able to experience object. It is endowed to wish with a separate mind. Mother Mega. Furthermore, a non mental phenomena cannot be the self that experiences object because it lacks the nature of the mind just like this job. Although it is it is said not of the true nature of the mind, it does experience object because of being endowed with separate mind. <clears throat> it is illogical for when self by nature not conscious about object comes to the conscious of them through being endowed with the mind it will be absolutely follow that in bec becoming a conscious self the non-conscious self would perish and hence no longer be permanent as you assert one of the self who unchanging them how through being endowed with the mind with a self which is not conscious of object come to be conscious of them this will not be possible thus if you accept uh, the self something that is not conscious of object because it is a matter and separate from the functioning of producing effects because it is permanent, then a space would also be a self. Rejection of argument concerning identitylessness. Question. If the self were not a permanent, the relationship between the action and its effect the door of the action coming to the experience of the reason of the action committed will not be maintained. This is so because the door would perish as soon as the action was committed and would not exit when the time come to experience the effect of this action. Therefore, whose action would be to experience? <coughs> Answer: The basis of the course of actions and air gives its life and the basis for ripening effect. The air gives of future life a distinct state of being, and since in both the state is established both for you because you accept a permanent self, and for us because you accept identitylessness. The self neither commit the action nor experience the effect. It is not meaningless to argue on this point. Objection. What about action whose food will be experienced in this life? They do not have different basis aggregates upon which the course action is committed and the result is experienced. Answer. Neither the, neither the less the same movement, it is impossible to see any case of someone committing and causal actions being subject to the experience of its result, just as father and his son cannot be born at the same time. Objection. <coughs> 
However, it says in one scripture, uh, how will someone else experience the result action one commits? Four months, the action you commit and accumulate will not happen on such thing as the external earth element, but upon your future aggregates grasped by consciousness. Thus, does not your assertion uh, contradict this statement that the door of action must be experienced in result himself? Answer. Uh, the statement is to be interpreted as a follow. While actually uh, considering the same continuity of the individual, the Buddha told that the door of the action is experience of the result in order to prevent people denying the law of karmic cause and effect. Actually, this is not true because permanent self is non-existent. So, question, why is there no permanent self? So, this is still asking what in the school. It's a... Neya Ika. Neya Ika. Neya Ika is Hindi philosophy, okay? So, um, it's a... Uh, <coughs> sometimes it's called the... In English, we, we call it particularist, particularist, or so we call logis, logician. So, <coughs> neither the mind <coughs> of the past nor the mind of the future are the self because they are non-existent. One has ceased and the other has not yet been produced. Question. It is the mind of the present movement which has been produced but has not yet ceased the self. Answer. If this were the case, then in the next movement, when it had perished, it would no longer be the self. With this reasoning, all five angels are rejected as being the self. For example, when the trunk of the plantain tree is split into the part, there is no essence found at all. Likewise, when analytically searched, for with the reasoning and true existence self cannot be found among the aggregates. Question. If there were no sentient beings toward whom could compassion be developed? Answer. Although sentient beings do not have truly exist, deceptively one should develop compassion for those imputed as the sentient beings by the confused mind which has promised to practice the Buddhist other way of life in order to lead them to the goal of liberation. Question. Yet if sentient beings do not exist, who will obtain the result of developing compassion? Answer. Although ultimately it is true that there are no truly existent sentient beings, compassion or the result, deceptively from the point of view of mind, confused about phenomena. We accept the existence of the merely apparent result arising from the merely apparent compassion developed towards the merely apparent sentient beings. Objection. Since compassion is both subjective state to which things appears in a false way and mind confused about phenomena. Surely it is equally fit to be rejected as it confusion about the self. Answer. In order to complete the pacified suffering, one need not and cannot reject compassion. Therefore, one should not reject this merely apparent confusion about the result. However, the confusion about the self should be rejected because it is increases such things are self-importance which are cause for suffering. Objection. Yet there are no means to reject this confusion. Answer. They are because supreme 
remedy for it is meditation upon identitylessness okay so this one finish reading now this is cool right what we are talking about this one <clears throat> is uh, this is cool sanskrit vaisika vaisika sanskrit so english means particularist particularist the, the founder of this school is called sage kunand sage kunand this is indian sage so this sage kunand who assert all phenomena of object knowledge are included in six categories so this is school very important they assert that they also assert that evolution initiation fast and offering of fire rituals are perfect path to liberation in this school accordingly when the self is in the isolation of free from desire hatred and anger or the pleasure liberation is attained so that is this school so so this is school uh in six categories six principle of the particularist number 1 is substance number 2 is quality number 3 is general number 4 is particularist number 5 is uh, composition and number 6 is karma so they accept this kind of cisco sometimes <clears throat> this is cool we also called uh, logicians Tibetan Rikpachama. First we call Chetak Palma is a particularist. And Rikpachama also. <coughs> uh, so we also call it logician. Because uh, these two schools. Last week we discussed about the uh, Samkaya school. And this logician school is the most intelligent in this school. in the ancient time you know always this kind of like that one so who follows this some sometimes we call this is school logicians the logician who follow brahma aksapata aksapata this is the name of the sage aksapata brahma asserting that all object knowledge are included in six categories which i mentioned before <clears throat> uh this school is school is known by the name logician okay because they follow the logician system taught by their teacher aksakapa aksakapa the general the presentation of the tenets are basically the same as these issued by the vesisika very similar one is vesisika one is nayayika nayayika means nayayika means logician vesisika means particularist so these are same as this issued by the general presentation of their tenets are basically the same as the asserted by the vesisika particular particular is school of hindu philosophy so that is the school now here this school is quite complicated but i don't want to go all the details but i just uh, mention you um, briefly okay So this sage, sage, you know the sage name? Oh. 
Sej Kunan. Sej Kunan. He is the founder of this particular school. Sej Kunan. So who believe? Also his name is some sometimes we call Sej Al. They believe Al to be God. You know. They worshiping Al. That Al, his Sometimes his name is Sage Al or Sage Kunan because he is the founder of this particular school, Hindi. Okay, so this. Uh, so now <clears throat> they're talking about six qualities, right? Mm-hmm. First one is substance. Means substance is the quality of independent. You know independent quality you know what i mean so every phenomena like mark or they have their own independent standing you know that substance substance and then we are talking about uh, a quality right quality if we take example of the book book is substance and then we can talk about uh, green book small book big book medium book these are quality quality so quality means book is substance and quality you know what I mean? small big color quality and now they also believe karma right karma 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 and uh, then they also uh, believe general and uh, specific so general means general is more pervasive if I say like this Tree, it is general, right? General name of the tree. So the all, no matter how much, how many trees, all belong to general, right? Tree, and there are many different types of tree. All these trees are particular. General is more pervasive. Particular is not pervasive, right? So general and particular, and uh, then they have this one, right? Last quality. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Composition, right? Composition. So composition means uh, it means like this. Composition is something like this. You you know, contact together comes together. Composition, right? So if uh, if vast come from all the elements, right, come together, contact composition. Okay, so it's in contact with the substantial cause and come together. Contact this composition. So, but this, I will not go all the details, very complicated here, but uh, they have, except, mm, we have this one, right, they are evolution. Washing, very important, cleaning, you know, sometimes clean the body, more you clean the body, recitation of mantra and clean the body will clean up our actions of the, if body, actions of the body, more you sacrifice body, clean up action, more you recite the mantra, clean up the speech, you know what I mean? So, appellation. <clears throat> and now, uh, 
they have initiation too, you know. Hindi have initiation and mandala and fire pujas and fast, not eating food, you know. Only drinking water, fast, and uh, offering fire rituals. So sometimes, uh, I don't know, maybe sometimes they have rituals of the, you burn the fire, right? Hold fire, you sitting in, inside and hold our fire. So you sweating, you know, hold. More you suffer, you know, more purifying, you know. You know, and sometimes they can burn the, Finger will go like this. Fun fire. Put the oil here. Burn the finger. The more you sacrifice, more purification. Fire ritual offering. And uh, uh, so that. So if you do like this, perfect liberation. To the <laughs> you achieve liberation. Now that, the, but they also have sacrificing, you know. So, isolation of the desire, anger, and hatred. So you receive initiation. Now you will go to the forest, and you know isolation. So forest like forest, and sometimes the uh, was well, no good, you know, uh, like sacrificing animals animal's blood, you know, sacrificing, and then they believe this is kind of like ritual, can purifying, and then doing this will also, also achieve liberation. But they also believe, you know, karma, you know, karma. But when they believe karma, you know, then I don't know with karma when we have Killing, stealing, you know, all these different types of actions of the body, speech and mind. So, sacrificing, then, I don't know what, killing animals, right? So that, I'm not sure, but but they also have uh, believing karma, you know, karma <coughs> and uh, liberation. This. So these are things very huge topic. They yeah, are don't want to go too fast, you know. But maybe, but basically something like this. This is cool. It's called the particularist. Except six principles. So this the man. Substance, light, karma, general. Pacific and compensations and quality, they accept the six. Right? So uh, this uh, this is cool now. Accept self to be permanent, right? Permanent self accepting. So now we are discussing with the Pasangika school, right? Pasangika school. So debating with this. So, do not accept. If you accept permanent self, there are lots of problem, right? Mm. So, therefore, from the Pasangika viewpoint, like first uh, to identify the self, we have to know the levels of the consciousness, levels of the mind. The levels of the mind, right? So, we're talking about. We are not talking about one mind, right? We are talking about different types of mind from the Pasangika viewpoint, right? We are talking about gross level of mind, subtle level of mind, very subtle level of mind. We are talk also talking about clay, clay light mind, something like that, right? So now Pasangika, <coughs> as far as so far gross mind is concerned, it, uh, we, it depends on the uh, Brain functioning, right? So brain functioning. So when the brain functioning there, gross mind will function. When the brain damage, gross mind will not function. So the mind and brain 
causal relationship to function the growth mind need function the brain is very important so therefore we call mind and brain causal relationship relationship the growth level of mind so long as growth level of mind is concerned brain is very important so we can talk growth level of mind from sensory mind to the mental mind like we can talk not only sensory mind but we can talk about mental consciousness we are talking about conceptual mind non conceptual mind we can talk all the levels of growth level of mind so no matter what mind growth conceptual non conceptual functioning growth mind is important to function the brain okay so brain and growth mind relationship is called causal relationship so when we talk about the causal relationship then we have to talk about two types of cause one is substantial cause another is cooperative cause so the substantial cause is stuff that transform into the mind cooperative cause is no transformation but giving contribution to the mind to function you know what i mean substantial cause must be stop previous mind transform into the later mind so cooperative is no transformation but giving contribution to mind function so therefore uh you can say there are two types of cause substantial cause and cooperative cause so substantial cause is transformation cooperative cause is no transformation so so substantial so when we talk about mind right so substantial cause of mind should be similar to the mind you know what i mean something is not similar cannot be substantial cause of the mind matter cannot be substantial cause of mind because matter and mind not similar you know what i mean we talk about buddhis we talk about two types of phenomena right? uh, physical matter phenomena and the mental phenomena the matter phenomena are located on the space and we can measure we can calculate we can size shape color etc because it locate on the space and we can <clears throat> you know calculate or measure right but mental phenomena is totally different it's not locate on the space we cannot measure only we can experience and we can experience that's the only way we can mental phenomena the quality of mental phenomena is to be experienced no measurement no size no shape no color so therefore <clears throat> uh pasangiga we point right so when we talk about this uh, mind uh so growth level of mind related to the brain so this is called relationship between brain and mind so this relationship there are two types of cause uh this one substantial cause and cooperative cause now this is very important in the sutra like do you, in the sutra of life settling sutra in this sutra is very important right we talk due to existence of this that arise due to production of that that is produced then due to in some sala right ignorance then consciousness in all these twirlings occur right so when this is very important for the mind I'm talking about due to existence of this that arises right so <clears throat> This is very good analogy like given by the A and B. 
right? B oko, A is present, B, B oko, right? B, A and B, the relationship, right? A present because B oko. A which present B oko should be existence. Due to existence of this, that arises. Because non-existent cannot produce existent phenomena. That's the logic, you know. Due to existence of this, that arises. So, A present because of B or co. A which produce B should be exist. Because non-existent phenomena cannot produce existent phenomena. Right? This is number one logic. Number two, A which A which, right? Uh, how can I say? A and B relationship, right? A which produce B, right? A, B, right? A must be something changing in permanent phenomena because Permanent phenomena cannot produce impermanent phenomena. Something changing must be impermanent and momentarily changing, right? So due to production of these, that is produced. You know, when any can, anything cannot produce anything. We're talking about brain and mind, right? Substantial cause. <clears throat> any substantial cause, what is the substantial cause of mind? Brand, right? Brand. Um, no, 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 brand. So, substantial growth mind is the previous mind. Right? Transformation we are talking about. Right? So, and then, then in samsara, right? Then what happened? Ignorance started our life. Right? We are talking about ignorance started our life and with aging and death. Is twelve. If there's no ignorance, no aging, no death, no karma. You know what I mean? So ignorance start our life, end with this aging and death. Because if there's no ignorance, no result of aging and death, no karma. You know. So that's why. So now the we're talking about mind, gross mind. Very much depend on the brain functioning, isn't it? So you need two cause, substantial cause, and cooperative cause. Now here, levels of mind we are talking about, right? Sometimes we talk about kunshinamsha means foundation consciousness, or the mind base of all. Kunshinamsha, Tibetan, it is base of everything. Base of samsara, base of nirvana, mind base of all, isn't it? Or we can say sometimes uh, foundation consciousness. So foundation consciousness, some from Gilukpa, when foundation consciousness means sometimes refers to the emptiness, means emptiness of the mind. Sometimes refers to the subjective mind which is clear light mind. Different school, right? School, the look by Nyingma, right? Is the great perfection. Mind of base of all means great perfection. So the great perfection, <coughs> so it is foundation consciousness according to Dokchen or Nyingma, you know, divided into two. Foundation consciousness, which is the base of latent potency and pristine awareness. Foundation consciousness, which is experience of pristine awareness. Two categories. You understand what I'm saying? Kunshin Namsha means foundation consciousness. Mind, it is the base of everything, you know, base of our samsara, base of nirvana, but different. 
different explanation, you know. So when we talk about uh, auction, right, we have two categories, remember. It's very important. His Holiness distinguished. His Holiness is very important. We must distinguish between uh, this foundation consciousness and pristine awareness. They both are object same, appearance same. Maybe confused, you know. So if you are well trained practitioner, you know, then you will experience from the beginning experience pristine awareness. If you are not well trained, then first we have experienced foundation consciousness and later experience pristine awareness. So here, uh, according to great perfection, right? So we are talking about the uh, basis pristine awareness. Basis pristine awareness is clear light mind, which is at the time of dying. That mind is called basis pristine awareness. This mind will not occur when we are only time of death. That mind which occur is basis awareness. Basis awareness mind, but not during now I'm talking in front of you, no basis awareness in the mind is functioning. It is functioning only time of death. When we train through that mind, right? Basis awareness mind and then foundation mind, foundation consciousness due to your practice or meditation. And then you will transform that foundation consciousness into the effulgent pristine awareness mind. Effulgent pristine awareness mind. So effulgent and then well trained, right? When you training effulgent pristine awareness mind, then finally you will achieve natural pristine awareness mind, which is great perfection, the Pacham. There is no beyond this mind, which is enlightened mind. Like Dzogchen, we called re-enlightened mind. Yeah. Because you already have enlightened. Just you have to introduce re-enlightened. So once you recognize this, you are re-enlightened. So, uh, so this is what Pasangika <coughs> So we have to distinguish what's the difference between basis pristine awareness and natural pristine awareness. What's the difference between foundation consciousness and very easy to confuse. All are very subtle mind, you know. Foundation consciousness and pristine awareness Appearance, object, everything is same. You know what I mean? So what's the difference between these two? Right? He told us that uh, that uh, foundation consciousness is sometimes unclear and diluted. Okay. But pristine awareness is always Perfect. Pristine awareness is luminosity. Perfect mind. So the difference between these two, right? Now basis. Pristine awareness. What's the different basis? Pristine awareness and natural pristine awareness. Basis pristine awareness occur only time of death. You see the difference now, in the time of death, only basis, pristine awareness, clear like mind. That is not completely great perfection, right? 
this great perfection is natural pristine awareness. So this mind may be confused, confused, right? We were talking about the ocean, about the great perfection, basis pristine awareness, effulgent pristine awareness, and uh, natural pristine awareness. What's the difference about this mind? So there's one, I would like to say this, who oh, this one, remember? Foundation consciousness. The foundation, right? We're talking about mind is continuity. When we talk about continuity of the mind, right? So we are talking about subtle energy of the mind, continuation, right? This mind continue, right? Today mind continue, yesterday, tomorrow, will tomorrow, because there's energy, mind, like water, follow, right? So there's continuation of the mind, right? So therefore, uh, <clears throat> when we talk about the substantial cause of mind, right? Remember, I'm talking about brain and the uh, gross mind, right? So relationship is two. Substantial relationship and cooperative. Substantial is transformation. Cooperative is no transformation, but contributing mind to function, isn't it? Right. So cooperation is not necessarily so but so substantial cause of mind is previous mind is substantial cause of later mind. Later mind is substantial cause of after this. Today mind is substantial cause of tomorrow mind, right? Tomorrow mind is substantial cause of day after tomorrow mind. So we say the mind is continuation because energy of mind follow, continues, right? So now uh, this substantial, we talk about, remember previous, I'm talking about foundation consciousness foundation consciousness which is basis of latency and propensity right and which is the base of experience pristine awareness mind so latency and propensity is not mind right Latency is not mind, right? Propensity is not mind. Right? Latency is not mind. Right? Seed is not mind. Imprint is not mind. Imprint is not mind. Latency is not mind. Propensity is not mind. But let latency and propensity is also substance cause of mind. Because latency transform into the mind. Propensity transform into the mind. Remember we are talking about substantial cause is transformation. Cooperative cause is not transformation. Anytime we talk about substantial cause, right? What is the substantial cause of the Pali? Pali seed, right? Pali seed will transform into the Pali. Right, so so, so it means Pali seed is a transformation of the next Pali, right? But cooperative causes are not transformation; they are contributing Pali to 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 happen or to produce. Very similar to the mind too, right? <coughs> we have substantial cause and cooperative cause, right? Cooperative cause are condition which make mind to function, right? If the seed is positive, then what? It will substantial cause positive. If the seed is negative or no, whatever. This is why Pasangika, uh, we pawn, you know, uh, we have to understand, you know. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Good. <laughs> Do you understand what, 
What is this? This is cool, man. <laughs> that is cool. Is owl. <laughs> Worship owl. <laughs> that, that is cool. <laughs> that the Hindi philosophy is cool, right? So it's different school comes. But that uh, Samkha is school, and then all the different Hindi school. Now, Brahman, Vishnu, Krishna, Shiva, all the different. Now, Vishnu is coming. Like Vishnu is very interesting. You know? the, talking about Vishnu, uh, ten followers of the Vishnu. One follower is Buddha Shakyamuni. You know? <laughs> so Vishnu and Hindi, or oh, Vishnu follower believe Hindi and Buddhist are the same. Because Vishnu have ten followers, one follower is Shakyamuni Buddha, manifesting. You know what I mean? So that, that will come later. <laughs> okay, thank you. <clears throat>